Welcome to the Creator Focused Podcast, where we hear the stories of content creators big and small. Today, we talk to Mike Crocker. He is a creator that has an animated story and commentary channel of 3,000 subscribers and a Lego animation channel of 50,000. We'll talk about his inspirations, creative process, and discuss the debate on whether or not to attend film school. Plus, so much more. All in this episode of Uno Mas. Man, I'm actually not as energetic as I was hoping I'd be because I slept in so late. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that was that's a combination of just having a really busy week. But last night, I went to see The Evil Dead with uh, some friends. Hmm. And I'm not usually big on like really, really overly grotesque movies like that. Yeah. But I love my friends and I just like seeing movies in general because movie theater popcorn is my favorite food. It Yeah. <laughs> and i had the really bright idea of taking an edible before i went <laughs> and i was like maybe it'll make it funny or something jake it didn't make it funny don't see a, a gory horrendous movie <laughs> under the influence of edibles it was it was literally the worst movie going experience of my life dude yeah i, I am uh i'm not like i don't do any of that stuff and stuff but like what i know of it that doesn't sound like a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking, dude. <laughs> I was, I was, it was, call it an experiment, I guess. <laughs> I lasted about, um, I lasted about 30 minutes into the movie, and then I was like, guys, I gotta go. I can't handle this. <laughs> oh, what a mistake. I guess we're in it now. I guess, <laughs> I guess that's making the cut. <laughs> well, not necessarily. Like I said, anywhere we or in here i just figured it was probably because well, there's a timer the i guess so um <laughs> i guess the last well not i guess i know it was a fact the last guest i haven't edited the episode yet but um i was kind of giving him a rundown of like what to expect and like what we're gonna do and stuff and like saying the oh, disclaimer okay. giving a background to to me and why i'm doing this and stuff and i didn't uh -huh. start the game so he's just staring oh, at the on, title uh... screen for like six minutes or whatever that's funny. <laughs> I felt bad because it's like, I, yeah, there's. It's just kind of like, well, what, what are we doing? <laughs> like, um, but anyway, yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna uh, continue doing that whole hypothetical question and stuff, but I do really like it. So I'm just gonna <laughs> okay. ask you it. Um, All right. If you had an udder on your belly, mm -hmm. and it produces four different liquids indefinitely uh, without limit. What is uh, what's what's your choice in liquids? Oh wow, let's think here. I mean, I feel like just by principle, one has to be milk. <laughs> no, I mean, I feel like it has to be. It would, yeah. I mean, there's four. You know what? Yeah, just for the meme, I'll I'll say I'll say milk <laughs> for one of them. I mean, All there's four, four of them know, are that's... milk. <laughs> well, hold hold your horses now. If I can switch it up. No, I'm just teasing. That would be uh, funny one... though. So. Ooh, okay. I just <laughs> I just looked over and saw four empty coffee cups at my desk. Mm. One would be coffee, absolutely. Okay. I never have to. I'd save so much money doing that. <laughs> um, let's think. Okay, I got to get creative with the last two. <clears throat> what you know? What you know? I'll say it. One would be gas. Okay. And then I could just squirt it right into my gas tank. Mm -hmm. Save a lot of money that way. And then, oh, how do you, oh, draw. And then I guess, uh, I, this feels kind of cheap, but I don't care. Liquid gold. Okay. That'd, yeah. That'd probably hurt because it would have to be molten hot in theory, but. Yeah, see, okay. And I keep forgetting that I haven't posted that episode yet. We talked about that um, before. The whole like liquid metal thing that has been brought up and I'm like, I don't know. It's like, does does your body have like the adaptation to be able to handle it? Like, because it's just this udder that you formed or magically has been popped on, it would be assumed that like it would be able to handle what it's producing, right? Right. So like, is that allowed? And then I started thinking and I'm like, I, I don't know, but I'm staying away from it either way because that much like that amount of heat is way too close to other things. That True. I'm not, I'm not about it. But yeah, that would be a really good money making one. And <laughs> and mine, I, I also went with gasoline, um, 
because of that. Like, I mean, yeah, you can fill up your car or uh, it could, I mean, I guess I don't know the, uh, the, I hate the term secretion rate. Um, <laughs> yeah. But you know, like I could maybe sell it, but I don't know how, uh, how long it would take to, to produce that. But, um, yeah, that's a, that's a whole podcast episode in and of itself. <laughs> the logistics on that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, milk, coffee, liquid gold and gasoline. Okay. Solid. And, um, trying to think i would probably also go with with coffee but i'd yeah. probably have it like pre-put together with the um like all the oh, sugar want. and additives that i have in it <laughs> um probably just you know pumping out literally lattes you know but, um, <laughs> yeah, really. i mean there's there's business potential with that you know i mean that and the gasoline yeah yeah i mean you could <laughs> it'd be like one of those south park like the asperger's episode where you probably wouldn't want to be able to like see where it's coming from and how it gets to the way it is. No, I, but you could you know, sell I was, it for the for the, the I was, lattes. I was getting ready to say I, I could see it being like a, it's like a cartoon of a um, of a uh, like a business that sells coffee and gas, and it's like oh that's such a weird idea for a business, and then you walk in the back room and it's like a meat canyon esque. A cartoon of like this poor bang <laughs> with things hooked up to his nipples just like give me the wall yeah exactly. to the wall. he's just like help me <laughs> oh. and the corporations like coming out and like you got to produce more like that kind of thing <laughs> yeah now that <laughs> be awfully weird to... yeah we're off on a great start i think definitely um but oh, let's let's get into to talking about you and your channel. All right, let's. Um, so starting off on you, what do you like to do for fun, like hobbies and and such? I mean, honestly, dude, if I'm not at work or working on my videos, I'm supporting my social life in some way, just so that doesn't <laughs> go under. Um, <laughs> oh, <clears throat> but um. You know, I hang out with my friends quite a bit. I have a very close knit group of friends. Um, we just started a D and D campaign not too long ago, so that's been that's been really fun. Hmm. I try to hit the gym pretty consistently, three times a week. I, I don't know if I would call that a hobby, though. I don't actively enjoy that one. <laughs> um, I would say my my biggest secondary interest to videos and like entertainment and everything is cars. I really like cars. Hmm. I have a um, ninety three Toyota pickup that I've kind of slowly been restoring and building throughout the years and um have, do you know those those contests on instagram that are like oh buy some swag and get entered to win this whatever usually it's a usually it's a trip but there's a lot of car ones as well and so hmm. I, I entered those from time to time i, I entered to win a, a toyota mr2 the other day and that gets announced on the on the 10th i think and so i'm like hey someone's got to win hmm. oh i have uno Oh, that's what it was. But uh, doing. But that's kind of it, man. Like, I I love making yeah. videos so much. It's one of those things. that's like, I mean, by definition, it is a hobby because because it doesn't make me my money just yet. But um. But yeah, I I would still it's still very hobbyish. Yeah. Um, and then wait, like, how, you, what wait, how, how did oh, go how ahead. did I get how did I draw two just there? Oh, if somebody calls Uno before you do, when you have one card, it penalizes you. Oh, weird. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I beat <laughs> you to it. <laughs> <laughs> um, what kind of music do you like? Like, what would be your uh, favorite? And it could be just at at this moment or, you know, I don't know how often it varies. Um, I, I really stay in my lane when it comes to food and music. Oh, dang, I, it's you. I'm sorry. I was going to be nice what? if it, never mind. I did it again. Oh. Wait. Um, but yeah, I stay in my lane with food and music, so I, I don't get super adventurous. I just kind of stick mm -hmm. to what I know. I'm pretty boring with it. <laughs> um, so I, I listen to a lot of punk rock and I like a lot of surf rock, especially lately. And, okay. um. Yeah, the Misfits, uh, the Ramones. There's this really awesome uh, 
little UK local band called the Voodoo Bandits. They're I've been obsessed with them lately. <laughs> I listen to I, I end up listening to a lot of uh, small bands. Hmm. But uh, yeah, a lot of that stuff, and then like some folk here and there too. Gotcha. No, I um, I definitely relate in that uh, stay in like stay in my own lane with types of music and stuff because I've been listening to. I think. Oh God, it's been. I mean, the entirety of this year, at least, but I just made a playlist where it's the entire discography of a band that I kind of like, and that's all that I'll listen to. Oh, um, yeah, okay. But it's, I don't even know what they're classified as. It's like, I don't think pop, yeah, pop punk, um, but like post-hardcore kind of like. Okay. I don't know. I don't know what they'd be. Kind of like a day to remember, that kind of stuff? Yeah. Um in some ways, definitely like them. Okay. Yeah, I like them. I'm, I'm into that kind of stuff too. Hmm. I could never be a. I could never be a. I listen to everything, guy. Yeah. I'm so I, far I from that. Yeah, because I'll. I just. I don't know. There's certain types of music that I'm just like I. I can't stand it. <laughs> like. Yeah. I don't know. And some of it I used to really like, which is kind of a weird like kind of journey down music taste or it's like in high school i listen to this band nonstop, and now i just want to jump into traffic if i hear them you know <laughs> yeah but oh yeah man looking back and being like man i used to listen to this mm-hmm. i had no culture <laughs> oh wait so i can hit the uno button before you do and that'll penalize you is that how that works um, yeah, like if if I play a card, I have one card left. There's a little thing that'll pop up. And if you beat me to calling it, then yeah. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. I think when I asked last time, I just didn't listen. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> 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 um, no, but when it came to music, I remember, I remember I was looking through your videos and often what i'll do is uh, you know i'll dig all the way back see what the first set of videos was and then oh, i'll sort yeah yeah <laughs> love the idea of that yeah definitely um but then i will sort it by most popular and then like okay. take a look at those videos and your most popular one was that uh what was it, it was like buying anything in 15 years yeah, yeah. Um, but then there was another one that was kind of a. It, it was up there, but it was the bad oh, driver's on. school. And that one, yeah, that one I think is hilarious. First off, but in yeah. that you made the comment, like something like, uh, it was like, be sure to start down your neighborhood or like street before selecting the music you're going to listen to. Mm -hmm. or something like that and you pulled yeah. out your phone and i saw a playlist called pop punk and i'm like oh hey <laughs> like that's what i took away <laughs> from it <laughs> oh right on <laughs> but i pr knowing me i probably um like orchestrated that i oh. was like which which playlist do i want to have peeking out the top <laughs> which is kind of i i don't know maybe that's not because i feel like if i had that idea i have a i have a playlist called um songs that make me forget where i am and that would have had a, that could have been a funny oh. one to put it there so maybe i wasn't paying attention <laughs> but um i had noticed that because i i i'll listen to a good amount of that as well as this band okay do you listen to like any of the new wave uh pop punk stuff like uh wstr uh story so far all those guys um story so far a bit um trying to think of what State Kanuka champs. Okay, yeah, to. state champs. Um, pull up my Spotify liked and see if get some clarity. Um, oh, broadside is another one. Oh yeah, I know broadside. Four years strong. Okay. Sleep on it. Knuckle puck. Um, some. Uh, neck deep is another neck one. Deep, Real friends. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You speaking my language, Jake. <laughs> Cause I, before oh, I got really into punk, like, like, like classic eighties punk, mm -hmm. I, I was really into, um, pop punk and still am really, but, oh, we're going to play that. Hmm. Um, but yeah, looking back, I guess. So I just mentioned what I took away from that video, which I have rewatched and I actually showed my wife at this morning. 
Oh, um, cool. But oh, ah. dang it, freaking good old Dusty over there. Oh, someone got you. <laughs> do it. Um, but anyway, first video. <laughs> it was uh, it was posted eleven years ago, and just oh my god, eleven years. Yeah, yeah, eleven. Uh, and it's just oh. titled uh, "Hello YouTube." Oh, so clap, dude. Mm. <laughs> When I get big and famous, I tell you what. <laughs> That's such a classic first video name. Yeah. Um, no, but in it, you, you know, obviously the premise is, uh, you, you know, your, your first post, your first upload. Uh, you're kind of going back and forth and finally starting the YouTube channel. Uh, spoiler alert, you did. But if, <laughs> it, if this was like, I don't know if, how how like uh rooted in truth it was but how long did you go back and forth before uh before starting posting and what inspired you motivated you to do so so that actually um i had a channel before uh this one um hmm. so i've been uploading on youtube since 2008 and that channel was um just lego stop motions and so I had been doing those for a good four years or so before I started the channel that I have now. And so, yeah, I was going back and forth on doing like IRL stuff and, you know, stuff where you would sit at the desk and, and I guess you could call it commentary that that wasn't the genre it was known as at the time. But mm -hmm. um, I probably went back and forth on it for a good couple months. I just didn't know if I I didn't know what they would be. I didn't know, like. I didn't have a plan because no one, no one had a plan going to YouTube back then. You just did it to be fun. But like, I sure. just didn't know if I had enough ideas to sustain um, a channel like that. But then I don't even know what my inspiration was to start because I mean, everyone, everyone and their mother has a YouTube channel where they talk at a desk now, but no one did back then. Mm -hmm. At least not a lot. It wasn't as common. I have. I wish I could tell you what my inspiration was to start that to to start with that format, but I I really am kind of coming up with nothing. Maybe we'll probably get 15 minutes into this talk, and I'd be like, "Oh wait, hold on, I remember." But as of right now, um, I don't know something inspired me, and I just started just started going for it. Sure. And you'll you'll notice I, I don't know if if you um notice this little detail, but there's a little clip when I'm talking to my mom, mm -hmm. and I'm like. Uh, and she's like, oh, do you want to go do X, Y, Z, whatever she said? And I said, not today, mom, because to today's the day I'm starting my new vlog. Yeah. And it, but it's so <laughs> it's so not a vlog. <laughs> but I don't know what my point is with saying this, but like, I don't know. It's just funny how oh, no. we know a vlog today is like <sighs> you kind of go throughout your day or whatever out and about. But I was just sitting at a desk, so I don't know why I call it a vlog. But here we are. <laughs> I see. Um, oh, what was it? Oh, thank you. Now you, yeah, no problem. Uh, so you, you had mentioned Lego stop motion, and I know that you I saw that you have another channel that is that. W was this that you're just now referring to, um, like a different one? Because it looked like this one yes. was created about a year after your like sketch comedy one. Right. So that one um, is not the original one. Okay. <laughs> so what happened was I, I had the original one that I made in 2008 and um, you know, something that was really exciting at the time and probably still would be today is that I got monetized on it hmm. as, and I, I was like 14 or 15. So this was a big deal. <clears throat> and it was one of those things where like, um, you know, I was asking my dad, like, can I set up an AdSense account so I can start making money from YouTube? <laughs> and um, I was like, you have to have, they still had the hundred dollar uh, rule back then. So for those, so for anyone that doesn't know, like you have to rack up a hundred dollars before you can cash out hmm. um, of whatever your channel makes. And my dad was like, yeah, yeah. You know, if, if you get to a hundred bucks, then yeah, we can look into whatever. And like two weeks later, I was like, Hey dad, I made a hundred bucks. Can we set it up? And he's like, Oh, you did. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so it was kind of fun to see him, you know, like clearly I kind of defied the odds and whatnot in, in his mind. Sure. Well, um, so that well, was, oh yeah was oh but, doing... but getting to that wait let me oh. let me ask you yep. actually answer the question so oh. anyway so i got monetized and i was like oh google's not that smart i'll just have my cousin that's really good at computers set up a bot to click on ads for me oh and they caught on to that immediately and they were just like yeah you're out of here buckaroo oh, and yikes. um and so i just i made a new channel with a new adsense account and everything 
and uh, started from scratch again. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. I'm glad that you uh, cut me off there because I was about to ask. It sounds like that one's doing pretty well. What happened to it? And yeah, obviously, <laughs> you know, so that's what happened to it. It's still live. All the videos are still up. Oh, like how well? I mean, for I feel like for back then, especially like, I don't know that. I mean, it would have had to have been doing pretty well. It was, man, because back then, you know, it was just such low competition. Like, it's mm -hmm. it's so hard to think about this now, but but back even just back then in 2000, I probably, I probably got monetized in like 20, probably shortly before I made the channel I have now. So probably 2011 or 12. Um, well, losing my train of thought. <laughs> what were we just talking about? I got really into the game there for a oh, second you're, you're and it fine. totally ruined my train of thought. Yeah, it ruined the episode too. Um, so I, <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, but um, no, you you were talking about that first uh, uh, Lego or not Lego? The animation was it Lego? Yeah, it was like Lego. yeah, it was Lego too. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, um, and it was, you said it was doing well. Yeah. Okay, so it was doing yeah. pretty well. And okay, so back then, um, I didn't have a lot of subscribers, but it was relatively easy to get views. the mm. The algorithm was so. Um, was so rudimentary back in the day and it was just so weird the way it worked and so i had a couple of videos that just did really well like in the tens of thousands of views hmm. and because uh, it, was, it was just such a close-knit community back then oh and the thing i was going to say before i lost my train of thought was you could ask you, you had to ask people if they knew what youtube was and a lot of the time people would say no it was that early in youtube that i was that i was on it hmm. and so um so yeah, it, it it was doing decently well. I got a couple of videos that got tens of thousands of views. I had one on there hit a million too, which um, which is weird because it was so simple. I was getting into After Effects, and it was just a video of this armored truck exploding, mm. and it was a it, like a ten second clip. That's all it was. It was just an After Effects test, and that got a million views for some reason. <laughs> nice, crazy. Yeah. So, so it was cool, man. Especially as like at that age, like wow, I like. You know, anyone will tell you like, wow, I can make money from this. That realization when it hits is 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 bananas. Yeah. <laughs> um. So throughout the kind of I, I had asked what your motivation and inspirations were starting off. But like throughout the years, what like who would you say inspirations have been as you kind of develop through? Because like you said, starting way back then, I don't know how many creators there would have been to kind of be like, I want to do that. I mean, there might have been, and maybe mm -hmm. there was a distinct one that you remember, but um, either starting off or through the years or both, uh, who would you say were inspirations? Starting off, I mean, yeah, there were a lot of people, or there, there, was, there wasn't a lot of people to really um, take inspiration from, especially with Lego animation in general. Um. I don't know. I mean, I mean, the the way I got started with Lego stop motion in particular is I have a very faint memory of being on the Internet with my dad. And this was before I th potentially before YouTube even existed. We saw this. Um, I was a little kid and he had a video pulled up. I, I had no idea like what kind of video sharing site it was or where we found it or whatever. But it was a Lego stop motion. And it was like a little dude walking around and he like gets in a car. And then like, I remember another car came over and like took his door off or something like that. And I was like, absolutely mesmerized. <laughs> I was like, how are these Legos moving on their own? How is this? What kind of black magic sorcery? I have no concept of what's happening right now. It was just crazy to me. <laughs> and I kind of got this thing on my mind of like, it must be this really, really in-depth like crazy technical process, son of a bang, <laughs> really technical process. <laughs> like I can't even, couldn't even fathom how it worked. And my dad just casual as a cucumber just goes, oh, we could do that. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Are you a wizard? I'm not. And he explained like, no, it's just a bunch of pictures. And he just kind of explained in a very, you know, low level way of how it works. And I was like, oh, like that's crazy. <laughs> and at the time I wasn't even super into Lego. But then um, these Lego SpongeBob sets came out and the commercial got me really, really hard. And so I asked for them for a birthday. And there were a lot of times where I took the pictures for a video, but then never edited them. But then mm. I got into more of like the, the Lego City theme 
and um and then from there I, I would I would keep taking the pictures for animations but then actually start editing them and then upload those and then it just kind of started from there so anyway long-winded way of saying I guess I was inspired by that that little animation video that just somehow ended up on on the computer yeah. one day and um yeah but from there but I'll, I'll go throughout time a little bit so that was kind of how it started oh i gotta pick a color that's kind of how it started started but from but then from there um i i still wish i could remember what what was the inspo for the for the in real life channel but i really can't think of anything but then from there i was very off and off on on uh, that channel for a while but then i would see um these like almost like comedy sets uh, people would put themselves on camera, like the whole commentary genre as we know it today. It started with as just people standing in front of the camera and talking about whatever they thought was funny. Yeah. And at some point, I was just like, I could do that. And so the the one person that comes to mind is David So. Um, yeah. I don't know if you know him, but he's a, um, a really good Korean. I, I want to say Korean comedian. And um, I kind of took early inspiration from him. And then of course, Cody Co came across the radar at some point. Him and mm, Noel Miller, yeah. and all the all the early adopters of that: Danny Gonzalez, Curtis Connor, Drew Gooden, and, and um, I don't know. They just made it seem so attainable, and I just loved how down to earth it was. And so, you know, you start off replicating almost a one to one of what you of what you're inspired by, but then you more the more you go through it, the more you're like, oh, I'll try this differently, or let me add this spin on it. Yeah, and then eventually. Um, I was trying to wonder how I could set myself apart and, and like leverage more of my creative abilities. And I was like, what could I like, how could I keep the commentary element, but then maybe put like a Lego animation spin on it? Because that is, you know, y you don't see that a whole lot. I mean, you see Lego animation, but not mixed in with other stuff. And so mm -hmm. I just kind of um, evolved it to what it is today with like the whole personal stories and everything. Cause I was like, uh, you know, it would, it would make sense to see, what you're talking about but it would be better off like as a as a story time kind of way and that sure. and like story times are no different either like there's the odd ones out and like swoozy and, and all of them yeah that do like uh go ahead i've been talking for a while no you're i didn't mean to cut you off i just no, you're good i i just had a thought that it was like i mean very commonly you see whether it's initially an animation channel or if it's just a you know somebody taking a clip from a bigger channel and animating it like you see quite a bit of like you know animated story times i don't know just thinking how many would be like lego stop motion versions of that if that's what you're that that's what it is right like you're saying like it would be a story and then quote unquote well animated like a either way. yeah right? or am i completely wrong here no, no, yeah, like the the stuff that's uh, that's animated, like in in one way or another. Yeah, so I mean, it's it, I think a cool approach. Yeah, I thought so too. <laughs> that's why I'm doing it. <laughs> anyway, I, we're, I, I didn't want to. I didn't mean to cut off what you were saying. So, do you? Nah, you're good. Don't more to <laughs> don't say? let me ramble. Oh, <laughs> what, what, okay. what did you say? Uh, that nothing really. I'm was looking at my my notes um oh, okay the something that stood out to me was okay so first off i guess the the first video on the channel i think is probably the first one there there's probably none private or anything just because of the how it looks um and is like it's hello youtube it's like i don't know but um the second video i thought was very well edited the um what was it? It was, uh, I think it was maybe GTA, the car, like you're, you're recording that driving around and then you and your friend are in the oh, a parked uh, car Zach's... with green screen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, but with that, it seemed like there's quite a bit of planning involved because of how the editing cut back and forth and like how it was synced. Mm -hmm. um, do you recall what the process like of planning that out was um, like? I mean, so there, there wasn't no planning, but there probably, <clears throat> there probably wasn't as much as you would imagine. Hmm. Um, 
because I, I had the idea. I think I was just hanging out with with my boy Zach. We're still friends to this day. And um, I think I, I think first what I did was I went into GTA because I think okay I remember now what had happened was I found out that there was like a movie mode in in GTA where you could um you know like record your gameplay or whatever and then you could mess around with the with the in game camera and like get like really nifty angles and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And I just thought that was really cool and I wanted to I wanted to get some use out of it and so I started off with Nico driving the car like in a in a house uh, driveway that looks similar to, you know, where I lived. And we're like, okay, let's, it's called Zach's first driving experience, but you're horrible at driving. So what we'll do is um, like, I'll just record some gameplay. I'll try to make something, you know, a decent out of it. And then what I did was I, I got all that where I wanted to, and then had it in the, had it in like the hood cam view, exported that as a video and put it on my iPod touch. <laughs> And then put that um, at the base of the windshield of the car. Oh, was it my go? Oh, yeah, it is. Put that at the base of the windshield of the car. You can actually see me cue it up. And then as it was playing, we were just reacting to it. So we could oh. see. Yeah, so we could see okay. what was coming up. And um, just that... like he, he tried to match his match his actions to uh, how the car was being driven in game and, and stuff like that. So Okay, yeah, no, that makes that makes a lot of sense. Because I was like looking, and I didn't even think of that as an option. I did, I did think of it as like I saw that, and I'm like, well, that's not what they're recording with, you know. So like, I mm. was kind of wondering why it was there, but I didn't really look. Oh, the through. iPod Touch. So you saw it there, at the like on the dash. I think so. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Because um, you can see, you can see me like mess with it to to start the video. Yeah, but um, in that, I did think it was like the the actions and stuff were pretty well timed with the like the car crashing and smacking into stuff and turning and all that stuff and um so i was kind of wondering how you like how much planning went into it to sync it up that way but if you're just literally reacting to it that makes a ton of sense mm-hmm. so that's a uh, pretty simple but it, i think it was pretty funny when it turned out pretty well and honestly like i mean it just kind of seems like pretty decent quality for like being the second video and also back when you uploaded it you know yeah it was it was pretty decent for its time i was i was experimenting with a couple of things with that with that one video but a lot of things uh really just panned out Hmm. pretty well because i was it it was one of my one of my first um attempts at green screening too and um it's it's a little rough but not not horrible no definitely not um but those were like the two pretty well the only two videos posted for a little while Mm -hmm. um so i was wondering if you would want to walk me through kind of the development of your channel from that point onward Uh, because it kind of it looks like there's a bit of a break between those two uploads and then um there was like a drinking psa that was like a couple years later you know and then onward Um, and of course there could be plenty of videos in there that maybe are privated or something but that was just from public view um yeah but i'm actually i'm honestly i i never scroll through my videos so i'm gonna i'm gonna scroll through my channel real quick yeah go ahead uh is the game possible or oh uh hmm. it should i mean it won't take that long but is it paused for you uh it is not i hear the timer play that's all good yeah, it's it's hard to remember because I I was so spotty with it for a long time. Hmm. Let's see. Yeah, uh, during PSA. Yeah, man, it was kind of um for a long time it was kind of just, you know, on and off with it. I mean, obviously. But then I think during that time a lot I was really focused on the Lego channel. Like during that time I I posted on there quite a bit because I was oh, getting I didn't even think about that actually <laughs> like because i i made note that they were created like a year apart but then i didn't even think to like look at that one in the gaps of the main one like oh quote unquote main one i don't know which one you would consider to be the main one but um probably the mike crocker channel it okay. is because it's the main one like today so that's kind of how i think about it gotcha okay um but anyway i didn't think of cross-referencing them so <laughs> yeah but well, it, it wasn't just that, too. I mean, you know, during that time of life, I was like, 
kind of late high school and had to think about standardized tests in college and stuff. Sure. So, yeah, all that junk. I, I didn't really do much. In, well, actually, that's not true because the uh, so okay. So I started doing the commentary stuff, and then uh, eight years ago, the fourth video on the channel is called Catching Up, and that's when I when I brought it back when I was in college. Mm. And I, you know, I couldn't, I could, I, I lived on campus for a bit, so I, I, I couldn't take all my Lego stuff with me. So I kind of used that as a creative outlet. Gotcha. Oh God, what's happening? Okay. Um, speaking of that, just your, your time and well, okay. Sorry, not to interrupt your walkthrough, you know, no, of, I was about of stuff. Cause there's, there's a bit, I mean, I guess from there to where you are now. Um, but sorry, I'll choose that color. Um, there was a video titled roommates. Yeah. And I like that in, in that somewhere in there, there's just a random ball of paper thrown, but you don't acknowledge it. I just noticed it in the background. Like somebody just chucked it at you. I don't know. <laughs> I just, I thought it was funny, but that was, I don't even remember like that said, happening. I know. <laughs> I believe. Well, you, it didn't look like you even saw it, so I don't know, but, um, <laughs> It was like you're talking about them and you're like introducing, like talking about who your roommates are and you like pointed in the distance and then you look back to the camera and you see a ball of paper just in the back. <laughs> That's but. hilarious. I, that, doesn't, that doesn't even sound familiar, but I believe that, it, that it's in there. <laughs> I'll have to muster up the, the gumption to look back at that. <laughs> anyway, though. Um, so do you want to maybe continue the, the walkthrough? Because like from then, like that was like, you know, you talk into the camera, kind of like those things you mentioned um, yeah, earlier. Com- yeah. But like now yeah. where you're at is like skits and sketches, you know, and all this stuff. So like what would, uh, what led you to that? What led me to that? Let's see. I was doing, I was doing commentary for a little bit. Oh, it's my go. Uh, duh, duh, duh. Okay. So I was doing commentary for a bit and then I got a little bit experimental. And then I think... Oh, but then I tried a couple of Lego stories um, where it's me talking to the camera and animating in, in Lego in the background. Hmm. So that's that wasn't really an inspiration. That just kind of I'm, just was an idea I had. And I was, you know, it, it's kind of the same format, but just with, with one added element. So that's kind of where how that happened. But then I started doing sketches. And I think that's around the time that I discovered Gus Johnson. Who oh, is, yeah. Unfortunately fairly controversial these days because of some history but <clears throat> at the time he was like a the sketch guy and he was just so funny and um i i, I love the the casualness of his format where the camera never stood still and <laughs> it just looked very homegrown and i i just mm-hmm. had such a charm to it and i and i loved it and so that's i kind of started trying stuff like that and some of them you know, for a long time, I didn't think they were very good, and, and I kind of still don't in a way. But actually, just two weekends ago, or uh, last weekend, I was in Michigan uh, with some family, and we were staying in Airbnb. It was me and my brother and my mom and my aunt. And we looked back on some of those and watched a few, and they were, like, losing their minds laughing. <laughs> and there was a couple where they were just like, oh, my God, rewind it. I want to watch this one again. And it really it gave me quite the boost, man. I was like... <laughs> Wow, I, I guess I'm funny then <laughs> in these sketches. So I don't really do them anymore, but um, but that kind of made me think maybe I should go back to that. Hmm. I see. Um, so you, you mentioned, so we don't even have to keep this part in, but um, I don't think I'm very familiar. Actually, I'm not. I'm not familiar at all with what the drama with Gus Johnson is. A few moments later. So going back to, to your channel. Um, yeah the most popular video is buying anything in 15 years Mm -hmm. i thought this was pretty funny you know simple uh (laughs) the freaking uh subscription plan just to drink the Lacroix. but um Mm -hmm. what did you find was unique about this video like like what caused it to perform well because i have a chrome extension that allows me to see some different stats on the video and looking at the initial graph it was like pretty immediate that it hit its peak um it looks like by day three it had kind of stopped the incline and began to level out but like that's pretty 
quick rising. And so it's like, what do you think caused it to, I guess, perform well right off the bat? Yeah. So what I think caused it to perform well is intentionally making it under 15 seconds or uh, 30 seconds. So I can post it mm. to YouTube haiku on Reddit oh. where it was on the front page for a bit. And um, okay. not, not of Reddit, but of the subreddit. And gotcha. um, it got a lot of traffic during that time. So, so that's quite a bit of the, what happened. Quite a bit of the traffic was external being. Yeah. Reddit. Yeah. I mean, okay. you know, a, a vast majority of it was came from Reddit. Gotcha. Makes sense. Yeah, I think, I mean, as a as a sketch, it's like I think it's I think it's funny still, but by no means is it the best piece of content I've ever made, you know. Hmm. But it just it just happened to do well on Reddit. That's that's the anticlimactic answer on that. <laughs> and actually, and actually, same with um, how to drive like everyone else. That one <clears throat> I split up into five parts and put on TikTok, and it went crazy on TikTok. Oh yeah, there was one of one of the parts is my most viewed TikTok of all time. And it has like, I think it stopped at like 4.2 million views or something like that. Mm. And so it drove a lot of traffic to the, to the uh, main video. Cool. Yeah. I didn't even, I, I don't know if I, I probably come across it someplace um, that you had a TikTok, but I should have looked into that. Yeah, you um, should have. What kind of host are you? Too. I, a bad one. Thanks. Well, yeah, obviously. No, oh, thanks for pointing it out. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, so then the animation channel um, or the stop motion, I guess we kind of covered that question, what started and ins inspired that. But like, I guess, where does the animation channel stand today? Because it did look like you had like a semi recent upload there. Um, but it sounds like you had called the uh mike crocker channel your main one so like where where does the balance between the two come uh the balance comes from there is no balance okay. i just <laughs> <laughs> it's work on things whenever i don't even know how to put this as an answer dude um well for one thing i actually just uploaded on that channel uh two days ago oh or was it yesterday yeah yeah i know yeah i uploaded i finished it two days ago uploaded yesterday um and that took a couple months. I'm I'm really happy with how that how that one came out. But um, before that, it was like months ago that I had made something on there, and it wasn't even that good. It wasn't even like a proper animation. It was kind of an experiment where hmm. I I was like, it was a video where I made an animation in one hour, then in I think thirty minutes, and then in one minute. And um, it was the results of that, and then my commentary on like how I did it as a short. So not not what I normally post uh, yeah. by mile. But um, but to answer your question about about balance, yeah, it, it's just hard, dude. Because I, you know, I I work full time, hmm. like most YouTubers, and I'm an editor actually for a, a local production company. Oh, and cool. uh, but I mean, luckily that's not uh, that's not like a crazy schedule. Like most most film jobs, it's usually it's either like a ten to twelve to fourteen hour day sometimes, but. Um, Luckily, I, I don't work a lot of hours in, in any given day, which has been nice. My boss wants me to, but I refuse because I'm like, no, I got to I got to stick to the channel because hmm. that's my main that's my main goal in life. So the way I do the way I work it now is I get up at five every morning and then I work on my videos until I go to work and then I come back from work and then, um, you know, eat, eat dinner, go to the gym, hang out with my girlfriend, stuff like that. Gotcha. Because um, I tried. It, it, it was it was hard to get into that routine too because um you know your your first idea is going to be like wake up when you when, when I, whenever you would in the morning go to work and then work <laughs> on your videos when you get back mm -hmm. but i simply cannot do that i'm just too drained from the day and, yeah um, kind of attack what you're passionate about while you have the energy to do it that's it man it's it's putting the best hours of your day towards what matters most to you and that you know, the channel is what hmm. matters most to me. I just, I just find I'm, I'm so sharp in the mornings and I work really well. And, um, it seems to have helped a lot. Hmm. Okay. Um, speaking of kind of, I guess you, you outlined it, I guess how you, how the day looks when you go toward, like when you put work into content, however, I want to actually phrase that without, my brain exploding. Um, <laughs> but what is the process of actually making the videos look like for you from idea to publish? 
And I'd like to ask the question for both of the channels. Um, but let's sure. maybe start with the Mike Crocker one. Okay. So you ask that question at an interesting time, actually, because hmm. for a while I was stuck in not necessarily a loop, but in the habit of like scrolling through Twitter a lot. And I, I follow a lot of YouTubers and like kind of unintentionally follow a lot of like YouTube strategists and whatnot on Twitter. Hmm. And um, I just see a lot of that stuff on my feed now. So for a while, I was trying to think like really, like what's a really retention-y, uh, you know, what are really retention-y ideas? What, what can I make a good thumbnail of and whatnot? But I mean, that kind of stuff just kills your creativity and, and doesn't, you know, it, it prevents you from making what you truly want to make because then mm -hmm. you're making something, I don't believe in making stuff for the algorithm, but like you make things to try to get the numbers and everything. And, and that's yeah, just not kind of trying to please want. people versus doing what you wish yeah man and it's kind of a weird paradoxical thing because like if you create it's really cliche and cheesy but if you create from the heart then that's you have a fight you have a better chance of people liking what you're making because it's your true authentic self hmm. um anyway so so i was doing that for a while but lately i've, I've been trying to kind of have my own little personal renaissance of like i just need to make what i want to make and so um, just try to forget about all the retention and whatnot. Yeah. But so my process is, um, I feel like I'm, I'm giving like a 30 minute spiel before it actually answers your question. You're fine. <laughs> but, I think uh, it's relevant information, so. Okay, nice, as long as it's relevant. <clears throat> so I think a hefty majority, if not, if, if not everyone, cannot just conjure up a good idea. You have to let the idea find you in a way. Like, and I, and basically what I mean by that is every time I've sat down and tried to think of an idea, I can't, um, you just have to let them come to you, man. Like it, it's, it's such a classic thing, but every good idea I've had, I've had in the shower hmm. or like if I'm walking through the woods or something and I'm like, and like doing things to let your mind wander. Like there have been times where like, I'll be like, I want to come up with an idea and just write something down and just get creatively inspired. And I do things that take me away from that. And going to walk going on walks is a big one love mm -hmm. love taking a good walk and then writing things down as they come to me and stuff so the idea is always like that um and i have a i have a big list on my phone uh that i write ideas down and then um usually what will end up happening is since my videos take so long to make i'll, I'll kind of have like the next one or two queued up hmm. and it just it just kind of depends on like what ideas i've been having and um, you know, you usually like if I'll be in the middle of, of working on a video and then I'll think of something and I'll be like, Ooh, that's a good one. I'll, I'll make that one next. And then it's just kind of whichever one is the, the most recent, but also best idea. Like, like what, like what is the best, best of the last 10 ideas I've had? And that's usually what comes next. Okay. So kind of like keeping a list of the ideas and then just attacking them in whatever order, yeah. but maintaining that list. Yeah. And it's, it's interesting because I, I have such a long list, but I, I don't reference it very often because like, for instance, during the last video I was making, um, I can I come, I, I came up with an idea and I was like, Oh, that, that should come next. And I have it written down, but I'm not consulting my list. I just know that that's going to be my next one. Hmm. And then probably what'll happen is I'll be working on that one. And then, um, I'll be like, Oh, let me do this as my next idea. Gotcha. And so, it's it, it's weird to talk about because it's very abstract and it just kind of all takes place <laughs> in my mind and it's a little you know it, it's a little different every time hmm. but i very much run youtube like a like an artist and not like a like a businessman because <laughs> i feel like that's a very common thing these days you know what i mean gotcha yeah yeah um um go ahead i guess we're still talking about the whole process so all right so idea established um I just pick a day where I'm feeling good and like feel like my creative juices are flowing and I'll sit down and I'll, I'll just kind of free form, write it like just kind of stream of consciousness, not cream of God stream of consciousness style, write down whatever I'm thinking, whatever comes to mind about the idea, just kind of let it rip on a, on a Google doc. And then I just kind of do it until I either it's done or I just no longer feel inspired or, or I, like I feel creatively tired. Then I step away from it. And then, you know, just kind of keep doing that across a couple of days until I feel like it's done. 
and then um i kind of restructure it so take it from a stream of consciousness to like usually uh like a bunch of bullet points because i found that uh to tell a story or to tell like a, almost like a comedy set in a way you have to uh you have to have this happy medium between saying something word for word on the script but then leaving room to um to kind of improv a little bit mm -hmm. and just get some some funny moments in there because i tried doing it for a long time where i would just read a word for word from the script or like you know look to my second monitor and memorize like the next two sentences and try to deliver them to the camera but it, it, it would always come off i'm on fire right now it would always come <laughs> off so robotic and i hated the way that I, that i that it made me present myself and so then i was like okay what if i just uh kind of like skim through the script like the word for word one like skim it through and then just go off the cuff so study it for a little bit and then just turn the camera on and, and just let it rip well mm -hmm. i can't do that either because my adhd have an Bang. can't like stay on one topic like I, I i'm like okay what what comes next like like i'll get so off and it's like okay how do i bring it back to my main point again and i never could so I hybrid it together. I write a detailed script, like how I would ideally say it word for word. And then I make another doc where I just bullet point it out as just little reminders where it's like, talk about this thing and then talk about that thing. And then I do my best on. And then if I'm ever like, wait, talk about this thing. What's this thing? I Then I can refer back to the main script and be like, oh yeah, that whole thing. And so it's jogging your memory just enough to stay on track, but not to the point where you're coming off robotic. So that's, that's how I... That's the writing and the record process, basically. Gotcha. And then for an animated story, if it's one of those videos, I'll I'll put all my talking points together and, and get it nice and buttoned up, usually from like an audio and story perspective, so it sounds and looks okay. And then I kind of I kind of work the animation around what I'm saying instead of like the other way around, for instance. Hmm. So I'll go through and I'll annotate it up, like I'll um, like I'll, I'll actually bring it into Premiere. And, um, oh, do I have any sixes? No, I don't. I'll bring it to Premiere and then I'll put a bunch of text over each like little chunk, just describing what's going to be happening on screen in the animation. And then I render out chunks of that and I bring it into my animation software. Well, well first I, 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 I type up a, a build list. So if there's like a location that's needed, like if, it, like if it takes place in a kitchen, then I'll, then I'll write down, okay, I have to build a kitchen. And then if like, the main character like like if i in the story have like a car or something then i'll 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 write that down so i write all that out and then i build all the assets that i need and then i'll shoot all the animation with uh my talking points as a reference and then export all the animation and then just edit down and, and kind of just kind of marry everything together hmm. and that takes about uh three months <laughs> <laughs> that was actually another question I was going to wonder how long, or I wondered how long that would, uh, like, doing an animation like that takes. Because, like, I I don't know. I used to do some of that. Um, I remember kind of early video creation was me with a, it. God, it, it's the worst approach to it. And I was complete crap, obviously, because of, I had a uh, an old camcorder that was my grandma's. <laughs> and I would take my action figures or a clay figure or whatever, and I would aim the camera at it. Well, I'd, I'd keep the cameras like in the same spot, but I'd uh, go like start record and record as a frame, which ended up being maybe like three frames oh, that my hand yeah. was in. Um, and then I would like, you know, move it a little bit and then and keep going. Um, but recently I'm like, man, I kind of want to, try that again at some point like oh, yeah? do, but do it better because I, I you know i think i would be able to do a little bit better than yeah. god how old was i then Ooh, it was i mean it was probably elementary school like it probably wasn't i don't think it was even junior high yet but mm -hmm. um so i started like looking into some different like uh animation like videos like how do they do this and it was like it's like putting it into whatever Adobe program and then masking the little like uh, an arm that was keeping them in place, like for each one, like editing that out frame by frame. Mm. And through the whole thing, I'm like, man, that and, and I don't even need to tackle it 
that much in depth depending on like what i'm animating but like seems to take a good while <laughs> <laughs> yeah no it does but um god it, it's funny because i feel like so many kids have had their little uh their little try with stop motion and mm -hmm. it just happened to really stick for me hmm. um i had another point too that i was gonna make but now it's slipping me but yeah it, it's cool that you um that you had that experience and um you think you might give it another go huh i don't know if i'll actually go through with it i've got quite a bit of think the, the problem is that i've got i've got plenty of like i guess creative endeavors if you will sure that yeah that's true I you don't, have a lot of channels i noticed <laughs> i don't have the time to do it but i have the idea that i want to and then i start it and then i can't follow through with it mm, and and so yeah. i'm trying to keep to one and now two because i would like this like i like the premise of this i like talking to people so i want to keep this going but yeah, I don't want to necessarily prioritize it because my other channel is monetized and I think that that's reason enough to try to tackle that first. Mm, um, sure. But it's like I've got that. I've got a Funny Moments channel that I kind of want to do, but I've kind of stepped away from. I had a freaking Star Wars shorts channel that yeah, I was I trying that. to do and I haven't uploaded since September because I'm like, this isn't... I need to prioritize other stuff. <laughs> and then I'm mm. like sitting here like, It'd be really fun to animate, but then I'm like, no, no, I can't. I don't want to actually <laughs> like. I don't have the time for that. But like, um, no, I just like the idea of it. Yeah. So I mean, it is a desire, but the practicality of it, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's a it's a whole thing, man. It's it's very much a a craft that it takes a lot of time and obviously patience to to master. God, I'm talking about. I'm talking. It sounds like such a dick right now, but <laughs> <laughs> but damn it, like I've been doing this for a long time. I'm going to brag a little bit. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not I'm not perceiving it that way at all. Oh, good. I'm I'm so glad. Like <laughs> I worry about that kind of thing a lot. I think I think not being modest is like one of the worst things you you can be as anyone. Mm, yeah. Yeah, I feel like I'm pretty over analytical on how I'm coming across with with No, same. Well, pretty well everything. <laughs> um <laughs> But uh, what is, well, I kind of struggle with the questions that I, that I like, because I do list out all the questions that I want to ask, and then I just use those as bullet points. However, it's mm. like, I, I come across one where it's like, well, we kind of half answered that. So like, I don't, do I even still ask it? But <clears throat> I think you should. And then I, if I just have nothing else to add, then just cut it, you know? Yeah, that's fair. Okay, well, um, what is your approach to content and how has it changed? I guess you did actually, you, you kind of covered where it was and how it is now, but like, I guess looking at them, how you would compare and contrast them, we didn't specifically touch. So what would you say for that? Uh, com compare and contrast what now? Oh, uh, your approach to content over the years. Oh, over the years. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> That's a good point. It's a good question, man. I guess I've just done, I, I've done a lot of experimenting. Hmm. And you, you know, you've kind of mentioned how I started off um, doing a lot of things, really. I was going to say just commentary, <laughs> but it, I've, been, I've really run the gamut. I've done the commentary thing. I've done sketches. Um I've done things that don't necessarily have a category like the the one that we did in the car. Yeah. I did. Did you happen to watch eggs? No, I did. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. I'm going to make a note of it. I got to check that out. But what you is should, it? Dude, I'm, I'm actually so curious to know what your opinion on it is. Eggs well, is like <laughs> a, a really experimental piece that I did. Okay. I don't even I couldn't even tell you how I came up with the <laughs> idea, dude. Um, but it's so what sorry to cut you off but if you want it after good. this round i could take a quick look at it and then we could talk about it okay yeah i i'm actually so curious to see what you to see okay. what you think and i just um, won so oh solid well um go ahead and <laughs> finish up what you were were saying i i, I feel bad i there's a couple of things where i like 
it's like in my head, I'm like trying to make a note of that, but I start saying something and then it cuts you off. And I'm like, no, that uh, that's supposed to be mental. Like, you know, <laughs> but um, no, ah. it, it's all good, man. There's there's a lot going on here. And, you know, we're, we're both having to do a lot. So there's no there's no right or wrong way to do this. OK. Oh, you just. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll pull that up super quick. All right. I just I just finished it. <laughs> Um, anyway, that was that. Question mark? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's a weird one, dude. It's a weird okay, one. What the f- <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. It just kind of came. Well, I just wanted to make something weird, dude. I mean, mission I accomplished, I- but like, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm trying to read into it. I'm like, what? What's? No, don't, don't bother. Oh, don't read into it. <laughs> I, just, I don't know, man. Uh, like, oddly enough, the inspiration from that came from Tim and Eric type stuff, obviously, but also like kind of hereditary. If you've seen that movie, mm, I've seen a breakdown of it. I refuse to watch it. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, it's 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 a, it's pretty goofy. It's uh, um, it's something. It's it's wild. Um, the the yeah. uh, hereditary not. Well, I, yeah, yeah. Mm, well, um, what? Okay, but like, (laughs) the the feeling that you have right now is exactly what I was going for. I guess mission accomplished there. I did write down a couple of questions about it as I'm also. Oh, okay. So I sent you another invite to Uno. Yeah, yeah, I'm joining. Okay, cool. Um, first off, the the main character's headband had chickens on it. Was that intentional? <laughs> yes, it was. Awesome. And then when you were covered in eggs, uh, I felt uncomfortable seeing <laughs> that. Not necessarily because of, like you being covered in eggs, but picturing myself covered in that freaking slimy, yolky, <laughs> you, you know, like. So how either, re- re- what's the right word? How much relief did you get from finally cleaning off? A, a lot. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> we filmed that, um, I think, right as fall was in. It was either coming around or it was in full swing. And it was supposed to be. I, I had had the idea for a while. And um, it was like it was like one of the last days that it was going to be like warm enough to do something like that. Mm. But even then, it was still kind of cold out. And so I was like, we got to do this today, dude. And so I was, we, we filmed most of it in like a public park, but then the stuff with me, I, I wasn't about to do that in public. So <laughs> we went behind the house I lived at at the time and the, the woods looked kind of similar. Yeah. And um, just cracked a bunch of eggs on myself and smeared it all around me. <laughs> and God bless him, dude. My boy, Elijah, he was the main character. And my girlfriend were just like... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my buddy Elijah, he's he's a weird guy too. So when I described him the idea, he was like, "That sounds excellent." <laughs> and so he was all he was, was that, all for wait, it. Hold, hold up, was yeah. that excellent or punny? Excellent. What did he say? Oh, I. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. He didn't even say excellent, but you know that's. Just, oh, okay, okay. I just didn't know if that was intentional, or oh, uh, no, because you know, it, it could be either wasn't. way. But okay, okay. Yeah, but um. It was cold out. It was weird to smear a bunch of egg on myself. And then after we were done, I had, <laughs> I had my poor girlfriend hose me off on the back patio. <laughs> and then, um, you know, it took a shower and whatnot. Gotcha. But yeah, it was like, oh, thank God that's over. Was um, was she the was she in it? Yeah, she was the wizard. OK, I yeah. Gotcha. Oh, my God. You know, then she ran camera for any time that I was um, oh. on camera. <laughs> oh, man. That's, uh, yeah, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you just got to make it, you just got to make something weird to, like, keep the keep the, great, the creative juices flowing, you know what I mean? Sure. <laughs> um, oh, man, I, my brain, I'm trying to recover. Um, <laughs> hmm. It wasn't that weird, was it? <laughs> it was, uh, well, no, it was just unexpected, I guess. Um, it, it definitely, sure. I think it's, I think that kind of like 
semi off putting, very strange, like that kind of thing. I think that's funny. Like, I love Meat Canyon, but like, okay, yeah, I just <laughs> trying to make sense of what I just saw, <laughs> which is generally my response to that kind of thing. Um, yeah, that's funny though. I, I, I love that. I've always had a love for like, I don't even know what this is. Like, I, I think it's funny when people try to apply some kind of deeper meaning to it as well. It, like, is it a commentary on this or that? Or it's like, no, nah, man, it's just existing as something weird for the sake of being weird. <laughs> is this representative? Of no. Yeah, no. <laughs> is this like a message on fertility? No. <laughs> this is weird as hell, dude. Oh, boy. That's funny. Um, what are you most proud of regarding your time on YouTube? Ooh, that's a big one, man. I guess like weirdly, weirdly, I'd have to say like I'm pretty proud of how consistent I've been with it hmm. for throughout all the years because. I feel like a lot of people will try YouTube for a time and maybe they, you know, maybe they get really serious with it or whatever, but a lot of people will put in a couple months and then they'll just kind of lose interest or stop doing it or, you know, lose hope or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I've been doing this since 2008 and I found some level of success, I feel like, but I feel like not enough for most people to keep at it regardless. But, you know, I... I just love making videos, dude. And I always have. And I think the real ticket is like, if you can do this without ever having made any money or like with, with, with no promise of ever making any money, then you, you, you know, you're, you're immune to anything. Then you can just like, you can, you can make it. Sure. And I, I, I feel like that quite a bit. And I, you know, I have my off days too, but for the most part, I'm, I, <laughs> I have a lot of confidence in myself and I have uh some really good friends to thank for that and because they they've always believed in me and my family for the most part has believed in me quite a bit um and then my girlfriend is just such an amazing uh supportive partner in, in everything hmm. and so that's i don't have a whole lot of headspace to doubt myself because i have so many people that believe in me so it's it's been nice and it's it's part of what it's it's a, it's a lot of what has kept me going throughout the years Awesome. But I love it, man. I, I, I couldn't see myself doing anything else. <laughs> and for, for a while, it's um, it, it's funny because I was, you know, I, I was hell bent on making videos and I always will. But also, it's also like, I just want to entertain people, dude, in whatever, whatever way possible. Like, lately, I've been thinking about what I could do beyond YouTube, like if I were to make a shit of money or whatever. And um, I just think it'd be cool to to own like one of those like putt shack type places. I don't know if, if you have one of those where you live, but in Atlanta, we have, we have a couple of putt shacks, which is like upscale mini golf where you can drink cocktails while you play. And like <laughs> the environments are really cool and everything. And there's, I don't know, man, there, there's a, there's a lot of stuff I want to do. I have, I have big dreams for myself. And so <laughs> here's hoping they get realized. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that's really awesome. That question, I, I think that, what would you say? I decided to, I really took that question and ran with it. Yeah, no, that's that's fine. Um, I guess a question that come up a little earlier that I jotted down, but I feel like maybe you answered. Hey, screw it. Um, it is there a way that you've like of or implemented to try to avoid getting burnt out? on doing stuff but at the same time you kind of said that like because your mentality is like i just love doing this i'm not doing it like for necessarily like you're not strategizing and trying to grow you know but like is there a way that you would say you've avoided burnout um kind of because you know even if you love to do something you can still get burnt out on it that's true um i've definitely felt personal experience of that because it's also you know a bit of an inner mentality of like oh like if i love this so much then why don't i work on it more and like why don't i work on it even when i'm tired and stuff and so but that's you know it's it's, it's not healthy to think like that hmm. um so really what when, when i was living okay so i live i've been living with my girlfriend since um 
it'll be a year in like July, I think. And before that, I lived with a couple of guys in two different houses, um, just, you know, as, as tenants or whatever. And so when I was by myself a lot, I was a lot worse at like kind of being hard on myself about not putting in as much work as I would like to and, and um, you know, working to the point of burnout and stuff like that. Hmm. But now, like, you know, I, I have to... I have to work on my relationships a bit too. And so that like having that to take me away from work helps a lot. And I I'm doing my best to not make it sound like, Oh, she takes me away from work. Like my girlfriend takes me away from work. I mean like she, she does, but it's in a very healthy way. It, it, it brings balance to my life. Hmm. And Kinda so helps um, you not, you know what? I'll be honest. I had a question that sounded, I thought really good, like kind of like affirming what you're saying. And then I lost all way of saying it like that I had thought up. So I, <laughs> okay. I apologize. No, good. But, but, uh, but yeah, but that's, that's how I, that's how I don't get too into burnout. Hmm. And like, if I, and taking like one extra day than I would need to, um, off, if that makes sense. Yeah. So you're currently working, you said, uh, as like editing in a film kind of production type of deal, right? Yeah. Yeah. What did you study in college? Was it film? It was film. Yeah. But I, I didn't finish college. I dropped out after two years. Oh, okay. Um, I guess then through your time working where you are and anything that you were to, um, have learned during your time at college what what are your takeaways i guess from like like how has that influenced what you're doing now for for youtube and, and like how, how have you what have you implemented to youtube based on what you've learned honestly dude not a lot <laughs> okay. there's really not a lot um i mean honestly dude the, the main thing i learned at college is that creative people shouldn't go to college <laughs> because you i mean it, it's kind of a cliche these days but like you really can learn anything on youtube don't learn how to be a surgeon on youtube but if you want to make videos for a living or any kind of art just learn it by your own means it's the best way to learn something you can learn it you can learn at your own pace you can learn as you want to there's no arbitrary grades to worry about hmm. um I, I, I really didn't care for college, man. And like the big debate, there, there's a big debate right now as to whether film school is even a good idea anymore. Honestly, that's and, why I, I asked, um, because thinking about that, like, I'm like, how much, I guess, would you apply? Because um, there's a podcast I started following. I don't really like frequently keep up with them, but it's the editing podcast. So it's. um OK, uh, what's his name? Hayden Hayden Hillier Smith and Jordan. Orr. Yep. Yeah, them guys. And um, there was one where they were like, you know, film school or not, basically. Yeah. And so God, dude, I, I know the episode you're talking about. And there's so many times in that episode where I, I wish I could be in the room and be like, <laughs> no, that doesn't apply to that. Or, you know, just whatever. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Loki getting so frustrated because I, <laughs> I, I, I feel so strongly about it. Gotcha. Um, but that, well, sorry, that's I kinda... why I asked. Okay. Did you have something else? I feel like I kind of cut you off there. Uh, no, not really. Um, I was just saying that, well, I was just saying that's why I asked because I saw yeah, that okay. and I knew that it was kind of a uh, debate. And so mm -hmm. I was wondering your your input and your experience with the it. The thing that gets me the most is that the main argument for it is that um, you can uh, make connections there with mm -hmm. like your professors, like your professors um, in theory know people and whatnot. But, and that's true. But the thing that I always fire back with is like, yeah, you can make connections and you might get a job and that job might be like one level above like being a PA, which is production assistant, the lowest form of job on a film set. Hmm. You know, you might you might start off as a boom operator instead of a PA and make, you know, 300 bucks a day instead of 200 bucks a day. But is that worth thirty, forty thousand dollars a year to go to college? No, no, it's not. You can learn all that shit yourself. You can make connections if you stick with it. Um, I have. I mean, the way... Let me tell you about how the, how I got in the position I'm, I'm in now with my okay. job and everything. So my mom is a dental hygienist. And she had a patient um, that worked for Cartoon Network. He was a creative, creative director. Hmm. And 
she had known him for a long time. He was a recurring customer or uh, guest, patient, whatever. And um, so she's known him since I was like 12. And she, of course, mentioned like, oh, that's cool that you work for Cartoon Network. My, my son makes videos. And he was like, oh, that's great, whatever. And they would talk about it from time to time. And eventually, um, and she and she told him that, that I make um, Lego stop motion. And he told me after the fact that, that he was like, oh, yeah, I thought that that's when she said that, that that's what you were doing for the time being. I didn't realize that you like that was your thing and that you've done it for years. And I was mm. like, oh, yeah, dude, I've, I've always loved it. And so he eventually got to the point where he saw some of my videos and he thought they were really, really good. And we got in contact and would talk on the phone and stuff. And he would try to like help me network. And basically, he really took me under his wing. He's, he's a great dude. Shout out, Ben. He is the man. Um, and so he tried to get me gigs at Cartoon Network. Like one almost panned out. It would have been like a $50,000 job. My, my stuff would have been on TV, but they went with another vendor at the last second. Hmm. It was like a, it was a big deal, man. He was really gunning for me, and like I would finish an animation and send it to him, and he would send it to like his whole like team that he works with. He hmm. was like really sticking his neck out for me, just because he he just loved what I was making and really believed in me. And and beyond that, we just really clicked on a personal level too. We just we we talk so easily together and everything. And um, but anyway, it, it got to the point where like he he ended up. Uh, getting laid off from Cartoon Network, God bless him, during uh, COVID when all the layoffs were happening mm. and everything. And um, so never got me a job at Cartoon Network, but um, he would still, like, we, we did a, a couple of small gigs because um, we kind of tried uh, starting up a bit of a pseudo production company together. And we made a local commercial for a collision center and uh, we did something for, like, one of his family members that owns, like, a, like an elder care kind of thing. And but he would recommend me for things, and he recommended me to this guy that owns. Uh, his name is. Um, not sh totally sure if I can say that. Maybe bleep it out just in case. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I work. Just give me a. Well, keep keep going. But. Yeah, yeah. So I work for this guy now, and um, it's because Ben just recommended me, and he, he just you just said I know you're looking for an editor. Like this guy, really knows his stuff, and um, it's you know it's the best paying job I've I've ever had because industry editing rates are insane. They're way more than people think they are. And so I'll go, <laughs> kind, of a, kind of a side note, but I'll go on Twitter and see like people looking for an editor and they're just like, I'm looking for an editor. It's a per project rate. I want Mr. B style reaction content <laughs> and I'll be paying a very generous $150 per video. And that's garbage. Yeah. I mean, like people don't get it. I like I literally make that in like like a third of a day working <laughs> working for the for the job I have now. And I was able to like I in in December I had I had about ninety five hundred dollars of credit card debt, and just this past week I got it down to zero because I get paid a respectable rate, and so many people are getting themselves ripped off hmm. by by working for absolute peanuts. But they don't know it's peanuts. It's hard to price yourself. <laughs> I had no idea that my rate should be my rate until someone told me it should be. And I was like, really? You can get away with charging that much? And he's like, yeah, man, that's industry rate. <laughs> We're not screwing around here. We're like, you you get bread. <laughs> put that put that on a t-shirt. You get bread. You can. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't even know. I don't remember what the question was, but. Um, well, no, we, we had just talked a little bit about. Um film school and and where you're at now and what you've learned and then you know carried on into where you, well where you're at now and some different side notes off of that but no um yeah i i had tried doing some video editing for a little while on upwork oh that, yeah yeah it was like i don't know it, they'd list the price and stuff and i'd start like calculating it and i'm thinking i'm like ooh. <laughs> like, yeah dude that's even... upwork and, and fiverr and all that like you're competing with people that charge like five bucks an hour yeah it sucks and people recognize that as a standard now because like if you're like a 19 year old youtuber and you're at the point where you can hire an editor you're like oh i can hire someone that lives in like uh, indonesia or whatever that's willing to work for five bucks an hour yeah and then you just think that's the standard but it's not. It's the overseas standard. But even though they live overseas and, and can live on a on a much smaller budget than you and I can, you should still pay them properly anyway because that's ethical. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that's right, Jake. We're getting political now. Yeah. No, we're, we're definitely I, not getting political. Okay. <laughs> unless you, I don't know. Unless, you, actually, no, I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So I guess that could kind of tie into another question. And it was something that you said that you felt you could weigh on, uh, weigh in on pretty, uh, pretty well. I don't know how I wanted to phrase that, but <laughs> yeah, I get um, you. Smaller creators, what would be your words to fellow creators that are, you know, on the smaller side, not not making it full time, not doing that, but pursuing what they love? Make stuff. It's, that's I all mean, right. It's nice really having that, you on. Uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> no, it, it really is. I mean, I'll expand a little bit, but it really no, is I'm that just simple. Joking. Like, I was just like that's yeah, the, yeah. that's the pinnacle of advice. Let's let's. Yeah, I mean, listen, man, this the, the best advice is often the simplest, like, I've gotten the most, like, I've gotten along the most in my YouTube career by by just not analyzing and just making stuff. It's such a cliche. <clears throat> but that's because it's it's so true. Like, make your 100 crappy videos, like everyone says to mess them all up, learn from everything. Um, if you don't know what to make, just make it's it just make whatever i know that's such an unsatisfying answer but literally just make whatever make what inspires you rip people off completely like if you like casey neistat make vlogs that are exactly like his because yeah. inevitably on that 10th video it's going to look way different from that first video that was such a direct rip off because if you're a creative person which you are if you're making videos you will unintentionally like completely by accident mix it up and add your own flavors to it and make it whatever your style will end up being. Mm -hmm. That's what's happened to me. That's what's happened to everyone. No one, no one starts off making their own completely original videos. We all start off as a copycat and that's okay. It, it, it's okay. As long as you, um, as long as you know, uh, as long as you're not trying to, to uh, have malicious intent is what I'm trying to say. Like, yeah. don't, you know, don't, don't rip off people just because you're like, what am I trying? God, what am I trying to say here? My thought, my train of thought is devolving right now. But you <laughs> well, know what I'm trying to say. Like, don't carbon copy something. Um, don't carbon copy. I mean, but even if you, I mean, honestly, I wouldn't even say that. Like, carbon copy something, but have good intentions. Yeah. Okay. Just get, well, just do what you need to do to have a starting point and and evolve from there. Sure. And I've always felt like, well, I've always felt. I. No, I've I've felt this way for a while, but I think. In our conversation, in my conversation with uh, I'm Cade, it would be the most mm -hmm. recent upload. He he brought up that I forget who it was that said it, but like when you're looking at content that inspires you, yoink and twist. Oh yeah, yeah. You who, know, take did, from was that Ludwig that said that? It might have been originally? yeah. That sounds yeah, right. Ludwig. Ludwig um, but it's like you know, take take from them something that you would like to implement into your own content, but twist it to be your own. Like, don't just yeah. like make a, you know, frame for frame reshoot of don't be the, uh, well, what is it? Is it metastasis to breaking bad? Have you seen that? I've seen breaking bad. Well, there is. Okay. I've been, I've been seeing these. Is. Yeah. It, I've been seeing these like videos where it's like, uh, scene comparison between these two shows this other one it's called metastasis it's like some mexican production company it's in mexico obviously because i said mexican but they could be here so i felt the <laughs> clarification necessary but either way they just took breaking bad and made it into a soap opera like scene for scene word for word is really everything the same and i don't know if they had permission i don't know anything about it but there's just been these like scene comparisons and it's like it's, it's literally no original writing. I don't know. Like, I mean, really? And, and I feel like you can't even, never mind. That's a side thing on that because there's whatever. But I, yeah, I've been seeing that lately. But my, <laughs> my point is don't just completely recreate somebody else's work, but like, yeah. you know, take inspiration from it. Do things that you like about theirs, but apply it to your own content, you know? And I think yeah, that's exactly. kind of what you were saying. Yeah. And, um, and that's, that's a, a a good example of where you shouldn't carbon copy because like you're just trying to make a profit by stealing someone else's work that's a yeah. totally different thing yeah but at um, the same time i feel like that and, and and going back to that specific example i feel like that wouldn't work like i feel like in that because 
it's a different culture too. Like, mm. I don't know. It's like with, I feel like with Breaking Bad, there was an element of like, they're getting involved with the Mexican cartel, which has a super big kind of not great reputation. But like, I feel like it would be somewhat different in Mexico. Like, right. You would think that they'd have probably a different person. Not that it's normal. Like it's still bad there, but like, <laughs> yeah, no, I know what I you're saying, but, the like, but there's a cultural shift. Yeah. To some extent. Maybe. Way. Maybe. I don't that, know why that, that was just, <laughs> but I know what that. you're saying, <laughs> but yeah, words for small creators, um, you know, yeah, and what, one more note on that. I, I yeah. would say that like, if you're truly starting from ground zero and just do not know what to make, then, um, then literally carbon copy someone twist it eventually, but start off with just yoinkin or sure. whatever else kind of get know, some experience you. with like, try to try to implement your own stuff if you can, but like, if you can, right. Yeah. Just get but some experience no with idea. creating, I guess. Right. Yeah. Hmm. Right. I could see that. Yeah. That's pretty well all my questions. Is there anything that you want to talk about? Um, uh, in your time doing this podcast, what would you say is some of the better um, bits of advice you've heard other creators say? Um, that sticks with you. You don't have to come with the best one, just the one that sticks with you, if any. I guess what what stuck with me the most was that whole yoink and twist thing. And it wasn't even something that was originally from the person I was talking to, you know, mm -hmm. but it was a concept we talked about and really what he had been doing with his channel in creating stories and stuff. I felt like I took so much away from that episode because I've been, I mean, for a good couple of years, it was like I researched constant things on how to better my editing, um, how to strategize YouTube stuff. And like over the year of like, there, there was a year where it was like daily, I'm watching content on that. Like how to, well, I guess really please the algorithm, that kind of crap. Mm, yeah, no, same here. But like, and I mean, like channels like vidIQ and Think Media it, and like, yep. And and I still booth, yeah. I still listen to them. I think that they can offer some valuable stuff, but I'm not gonna like use it as a template, you know? Right. Um but yeah, I was researching them and stuff, and I'm like, okay, I'll use the vidIQ extension to uh go through all of the games that I have and see what you know, like what um what's performing best in search. Which right. that's I mean it's appealing to search. It's, I, I guess I'm okay with how it turned out, but I don't really like doing that kind of stuff anymore. Um, but I had done that and, you know, had, but, but I still had this like question of it's like, well, this is the kind of content that it is actually, it's performing well. I mean, it got my channel to be monetized. I'm doing decent in far, as far as views, but like audience retention isn't really there audience building isn't there and overall i want to build that community like that should be mm -hmm. my end goal not right chasing views and money and so i'm like okay i'm gonna i want to switch to doing more entertaining stuff but anytime i would i didn't get any real like the, the, it just didn't perform well at all and um I kept looking for like how to adequately put in a story to a gaming funny moments video. Cause like mm. there's channels like Smitty and, and any of the misfits, uh, Vanoss, all them that like they do, I mean, random funny moments and it performs well. It's like, how do I do that? But like anytime I did, it was just, you know, lacking something. Um, but I could never find answers on like how to pursue that type of content. So I'm like, all right, I guess I'll just continue doing search. Um, mm -hmm. But that conversation with him kind of answered some of those questions that I could directly apply to my channel. And prior to that episode, I had done, I mean, I had done different videos that like were me trying to be entertaining and it's like with a friend or this and that, and it maybe do 30 views total. And that was, uh, I mean, my channels at that time was probably 7,000. I mean, and I'm not much above that now. I just passed eight, but like I'm just a little bit back and saying that to mean that 7K and pulling 30 views, <laughs> like that isn't <laughs> great. 
Um, but I, I talked to him and stuff and I started like applying these things and like I, I borrowed some ideas like the whole 2D animation uh, thing from Finzar. You know, he does 2D Fin. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was like, I, I want to add that because I think it adds that kind of level of like, I don't want to be on camera, so I don't like I'm not going to be sitting there describing it. But like this is kind of a replacement to me doing that. And so I borrowed from that. I, I worked at building somewhat of a story the way that he said and all that. And I posted it and it's currently, I think, at 50K views. And oh, wow. I gained That's awesome. like 300 subs. And I'm like, oh, wow. OK, I, I actually was able to apply this and I, I enjoyed making the content. I'm really actually proud of the video, at least the first nice. half. Um, and <laughs> you know, so I, I feel like that was, I feel like the most beneficial as far as like the, the advice is story building and, um, you know, taking and borrowing and, uh, twisting and whatnot from that episode. Yeah, I'd say that's probably my takeaway, like the best piece of advice or wasn't that your original question? Yeah. 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 No, yeah, I'd that's say good, probably that's good that, advice. But, Yo, you can twist. but I don't know if it's the advice itself or just the fact that it answered some of my questions and I was able to finally kind of get over that hump of what was blocking me. I felt like from making content I like. Sure. I don't know. I don't know. But, um, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Uh, Let's but, see how it is. Yeah. Um, was there any, I guess, looking at looking at the previous episodes, I've so, so far I've pretty well only covered gaming creators, but is there any episode, because you said you've listened to um, a good amount of them, if not all of them, uh, that you appreciated or that stuck out to you? Honestly, man, like whenever I would listen to it, I listen to a lot of podcasts when I animate and I was mm. animating the video that I just uploaded that I was talking about. So yeah. uh, nothing really sticks out because a lot of the times it fades to the background. That's so, fair. yeah, but um, so nothing really stuck out. I, I just like being in the environment of creators talking about what they're doing. Sure. Um, um, I, I don't want to yeah. like try to go for like favorites, but was there any of the creators that you favored more? <laughs> um. Uh, wasn't it, which is the guy that that you're uh, friends with? Um, well, three three of them I'm I'm friends with. One of them more I guess personal mm. than the others is Diesel. Yeah, Diesel. Yeah, I, I I remember liking his, and I think you guys being friends kind of helped your dynamic a bit. That's crazy because um, I felt like that was my most awkward episode. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Well, I feel like from what I remember, he also just had really good things to say. Hmm. Like I, I remember, like I can't. I mean, once again, I can't think of anything specific. Specific, but I was like, yeah, this guy has good takes on a lot of things. Hmm. I guess last question that I have that wasn't like directly. I guess this relates to your channel, but what does the future of your channels hold? Upcoming projects, aspirations, whatever it may be. Yeah, the f uh, the future. <laughs> I want. <laughs> yeah i uh i want to get to the point where i can upload more often um because mm. as of right now i'm uploading like once every two months or so and um which you know i just want to do it way more than that mm. just because i could just mostly because consistency is so important on youtube and i have very little of that by the nature of my videos mm. oh, i just touched my ox um <laughs> it made like a loud sound oh but um so on that note, I want to do more of like just the IRL stuff uh, without any animation. So I don't know if you saw um, the door tier list ranking every Minecraft door. That was my last upload. <laughs> yeah, actually. I did. <laughs> yeah, so that that was a lot of fun to make. And um, Lauren, she's so fun on camera and um, just just stuff like that. And for a while, that was me commentating on movies and shows and stuff. But I find that that's it takes me out of my element a little bit. Like, I'm just not very good at it. Like for instance, mm -hmm. we did, um, we did this commentary channel on this movie we found on Tubi called the Christmas Twister, hmm. which is just as bad and funny as it sounds. 
-hmm. But I noticed like when I started to edit it, I was trying so hard to be funny and I didn't realize it at the time. But it got to the point where I was just like, we have to scrap this whole video. Like, I can't watch this anymore. Like, I'm I'm cringing so hard at myself. Hmm. And it ended up being kind of a big deal. And I, it really made me think about, like, like how to be funny, but also, like, what kind of videos I want to make going forward. And I've, I've had some good, like, commentaries on movies. Like, I did one on the Velocipaster with one of my former roommates. And that <laughs> I performed did. pretty well. I did what, watch what? that one. Oh, you did? Yeah. Yeah, that one. That one turned out pretty well and i think that's because he and i had such good chemistry hmm. and um which of course always helps but and then there's one that lauren and i did on um like the the best worst horse girl movie or something like that mm -hmm. that one panned out pretty well so besides besides those few couple of uh, outliers i just feel like I'm, I'm just not very good at commentating on, on movies and shows so hmm. I'm trying to do I'm trying to shift into things like ranking every Minecraft door. Like I also had the the idea of ranking every um Lego animal like in terms of cuteness. Okay. And so just trying to think and like I have another one in the on the docket called how to deal with extremely hot people. And mm -hmm. it's me like coming up with this graph system and I'm like I I want to put like a bunch of paper over my out over my windows on the apartment. We have these big windows. And using it as a whiteboard and like just hmm. explaining it like in a really like crazy fashion. I don't know, man. Just I'm just trying to get a little more outside of the box. Sure. Um, with that, with that one, I'm just picturing um, uh, what's his name from It's Always Sunny, you know, with like. Oh, the, yeah. And with the, the meme of him like pointing at the. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, think it's going to have that kind of energy analyzing. But like that is what I'm picturing. Yeah, no, you, you should. That's that's going to be kind of <laughs> how it looks. Hopefully, if I do it right. Hmm. Oh my god, everyone has Uno. <laughs> but yeah, so I i mean, I want to keep up the animation stuff because I, I just love it. And I, I always will. But because it takes so long, it's like, alright, I, I gotta come up with something else to kind of put in between things. Yeah. So, I'll <laughs> see more of that. And I, and I might, um, I want to take a more cinematic approach too, to certain things. So I'm kind of saving up for a cinema camera right now because I think the next wave of YouTube that's kind of already started actually is that people are going to figure out how to get a lot more cinematic with uh, what they're making instead of just having it really straightforward. And so yeah. I, I've always loved that stuff and I want in on it. And um, so I might get back to sketches sometime in the near future, but I want to make sure, but I, but I want to do it from like a more cinematic standpoint and um, just mixed up a little bit. I have an idea for a, a, a Quentin Tarantino uh, parody. Like every Quentin Tarantino <laughs> movie has the scene and it's gotcha. like me and, me in in like a suit and my friend that's dressed like a hippie and he's smoking a cigarette or whatever and we have like a really nonsensical argument that goes on for way too long and doesn't contribute to an overall story and then at the very end like someone walks in front of the camera and i'm like look at that broad's feet or something like that <laughs> gotcha okay so yeah I, I have i have a lot of plans for the future and i think about it a lot if you can't if you can't already tell <laughs> cool um is there anything you want to direct people towards as we close out um, I guess my two main channels, man, um, youtube.com slash at Mike Crocker spelled in the, as, as in the name of the episode, of course. And, um, my other channel, youtube.com slash at micro animations, micro spelled with a K M I K R O. Um, those are the two things that I'm, that I'm looking at a lot right now. I just uploaded on micro two days ago or yesterday. It's got that wrong again. <laughs> and, um, Yeah. Hit that subscribe and like button and uh, and keep up with me. I'm having a lot of fun, and I think uh, I think you will too. Following along. Thanks for listening to this episode. If you have a content creator whose story you want to hear, please comment their channel name, and I'll try to get them as a guest. If you are a content creator that would love to share your story, please fill out the linked request form in the description. Otherwise, we'll see you next time for another episode of Uno Mas.